The China International Optoelectronics Expo showcases China's latest night vision and thermals technology. Last year was a blast, so this year we gotta go again. Alright, let's start at ADNV's booth, and the star of the show here is the ADNV G18. The G18 is a panoramic night vision device that uses four of ADNV's 1 inch CMOS sensors, the same that they are using in their G14P2. This means you're going to get Gen 3 levels of low light performance in this digital panel. Also, the image stitching between the forward and side channels on this panel is basically seamless. And this is basically what it looks like in ADNV's NL4 darkroom at their booth. And oh yeah, the G18 also has an articulating bridge, you can flip the pods out of the way. And another new development from ADNV is the ADNV G31. The G31 is a binocular night vision system that uses ADNV's 1 inch CMOS sensor. And it currently has two versions, one with an articulating bridge and one with an Anvis style bridge. Also at the ADNV booth is this interesting spectrometer camera system that uses ADNV sensors. It's made by a brand new startup company called Stelexpo Optotech and it leverages ADNV sensor sensitivity combined with a 9 channel color filter array to perform spectrometry measurements that is accurate even in low light. They operate on the principle that different materials such as human skin or the plastic used in drone construction have different spectral return characteristics. And hence, it compares the spectral return of what it is seeing to a database to identify targets. And because it is working off of spectra instead of optical image recognition, it can work in very low light. You just need a few photons reflecting off the target to identify it. Just imagine the utility of such a system in practice. You can have security cameras that can identify targets by their spectral return alone, and imagine such a system on a vehicle mounted or even head mounted application. Imagine if your nod can highlight the spectral return of human skin or uniforms. And here in a tiny booth full of night vision devices, at the corner of the expo hall, we find Tai An North Photoelectric Instrument Company. While unassuming, they are actually the civilian front of plant number 5808, which is a supplier for the PLA. And yes, they make the Type 19 that's been seen in parades, and also the BBG 191 3 that recently entered PLA service. Their notable products on display include this Lucy clone that has 50 degrees of field of view and surprisingly decent optical clarity. And of course, they also have their own thermal fusion binocular night vision system. However, this one uses image intensifier tubes for the NV channel instead of ADNV CMOS sensor. And of course, no night vision repertoire is complete without a panoramic quad knot, so they actually make their own. The eyepiece on this one is also really nicely made with decent image stitching and good optical characteristics. And we also have this binocular intensifier night vision unit that takes MX10160 tubes but weighs less than 420 grams. That is even lighter than a DTNVS. And now moving back to more traditional players, we're now at Norinco NNVT's booth. There isn't a lot of new exciting things at NNVT's booth, but there is this thing. This is a tiny handheld monocular meant specifically for civilian sale even in places like France where you cannot have head mountable or weapon mountable night vision. It uses a minimum FOM 1400 NVT4 tube and has glass and optics made by Plant 298. It also comes in multiple colors if you want it to look less threatening. And interestingly, we have two new image intensifier tube manufacturers making their debut at CIOE. The first one of which is CTC number 55. We've covered their low spec early Gen 3 tube on this channel before. And since then, they've been able to improve the specs of their Gen 3 tubes. This is a spec sheet of what they're offering now. 
And the other new player in the Image Intensifier tube manufacturing game is Adam Sai. They manufacture both Gen 2 Plus tubes and Gen 3 tubes. Their Gen 2 Plus lineup include tubes with photocathode diffraction gratings not unlike those found on the NVT7 and the Photonus 4G. Meanwhile, their Gen 3 tubes share a lot of similar specs compared to those offered by CTC plant number 55. However, Adam Sai is able to guarantee a much higher minimum gain on their high-end Gen 3 tubes compared to CTC 55. Adam Sai is also offering complete NV solutions in the form of a pre-built PVS14 clone. And they also had a NL4 Starlight Level Darkroom at their booth in which we were able to test the PVS14 clone and the tube works surprisingly well. The color hue of their P45 white phosphor mix is surprisingly pleasing on the eyes. CTC11 also showed up at the expo, they're the manufacturer behind the mini clone we've seen on this channel before. And notable products from them include this tiny digital mono which uses ADMV's half inch CMOS sensor and this unusually bulky thermal fusion image intensifier night vision monocular. Alright, before we move on to the thermals part of the expo, let's cover an old friend of the channel, Lindu Optics. At last year's CIOE, their thermal fusion binoculars were present, but the thermal module wasn't ready. Now, they're ready. Firstly, let's talk about their thermal fusion PVS7 style device. It combines a Russian short format non-averting tube with a 384x288 thermal core. Its thermal fusion modes include highlight and outline. And they also offered this folded biocular that is actually OEM by Dedo, hence the better performing optics. In fact, this folded biocular actually has better optics compared to the PVS7 style device and also a wider field of view for both the MV channel and the thermal channel. Meanwhile, the folded biocular can actually work off of just one single CR123A battery while the PVS7 style device needs an external battery pack in order to power the thermal channel. And now, moving on to thermal devices, let's start with Guide Infrared. While Guide didn't really show up to this year's CIOE with a lot of new devices, they did bring some interesting new technology. Take this for example, Guide is now making 8 micron pixel pitch thermal cores. This means a thermal module capable of 640 by 512 resolution can now be made as small as your thumbnail. And from the live video feed, the image quality looks pretty good as well. And of course, we also have to look at what iRay has to offer this year. Notable devices include their 1280 by 1024 resolution PS50. It comes in a flip screen camcorder-like form factor. And its insane HD thermal resolution means you can zoom in 8 times digitally and still have a decent image. And on a more affordable side, iRay has now fully released the Discovery DR200. This is a range-finding thermal fusion monocular that uses a 256 by 192 thermal core combined with a low-light CMOS sensor. Alright, and for our last device highlight, we have the Ziyou Hu TU120. It is a 384 by 288 resolution thermal device with both a dovetail mount for head mounting and a Picatinny rail for weapon mounting. And perhaps most importantly, with an MSRP of just 7,000 yuan, this is perhaps one of the cheapest head mountable night vision devices with 384 by 288 resolution out there. Alright, that's all of it. Thanks for watching.